Wednesday night. Lowdown Blue Meanie versus the Incinerator. I can't. Let me rephrase. Lowdown Blue Meanie. I understand monster truck code. Do you understand can't? Not when it follows Lowdown Blue Meanie. Is the world coming to an end Tuesday night? Otherwise, Wednesday. All right. It's not can't. It's don't want to. The fact is, I just don't like monster trucks. Yes, you do. No, I don't. You've always liked monster trucks. No, you've, you've always liked, liked them. them. I've tolerated them. Seriously, I can only watch so many hyped up dune buggies crush so many motorhomes without feeling the urge to go see La Boheme. And I hate opera too. What are you hiding? I'm not hiding it. I'm saying it loud and proud. Death to monster trucks. No nasal cancer. And no marriage either if our patient keeps saying everything that comes into his head without regard for the consequences. You always led me to believe you were one of a kind. Luckily, jerkiness is a temporary condition for this guy. No, it's not. He may be able to fix his impulse to say his thoughts out loud, but he's always gonna be the guy who thinks them. But he's also gonna be the guy who doesn't say them. If he spent his whole life constructing this nice guy persona, isn't that as much who he really is as anything else? You would argue that. You're all persona. I agree with Wilson. This guy's Harry Potter. The sorting hat was gonna put Harry in Slytherin based on his nature. He refused, so he ended up in Gryffindor through choice. There's damage somewhere in his brain. Go find it. Anyone sitting here? Just my persona. You know, it's amazing when people cling on to insults or what they think are insults. So that wasn't an insult? I'm not suggesting that, like our patient, you're hiding a dark, sarcastic core beneath a candy shell of compulsive niceness. I'm not always nice. I'm not nice to you. Because you know nice bores me. Hence, I'm still nice. No, I'm suggesting that you have no core. You're what whoever you're with needs you to be. Okay, I guess that could be insulting. The interesting question is why? Why do you think the world will end in chaos and destruction if you're not there to save it? Because when my parents put me in the rocket and sent me here, they said, James, you will grow to manhood under a yellow sun. And why'd you lie about monster trucks? I didn't. I checked your appointment book. You got tomorrow night marked off, but you didn't put down what you were doing. So you thought someone might look at the book. I'm playing racquetball tomorrow night with Taub. Why would you hide that? Because the world revolves around you. I devote time to anyone else, you'd end up stalking me and harassing them. You say that as though it wouldn't be fun. And maybe I didn't want to rub your nose in the fact that we'd be doing something you can no longer do. Because I'm nice. Your assistant said that you were out of the hospital taking a walk. Is there an emergency? I don't know, is there? You never take a walk unless you got something you need to think about. Maybe you just don't have a good statistical sampling of my walks. The other thing you do when you need to think is you come to my office. Apparently, this is something you can only discuss with Gonzalez at New York Mercy. Taub, another graduate of the House School of Being a Dick. Private dick. Look, I'd love to stay for the full Inquisition, but I need some hot coffee. Of course you need hot coffee. It's 45 degrees outside and you left your coat upstairs. Why? You're going to tell me why I forgot my coat? Once you get outside, the cold would have reminded you. you could have come back, but you didn't. You chose to be uncomfortable. Now, why would someone choose that? Because they hate themselves? Has it ever occurred to you that when I don't share something, it might not be meant as a challenge? It might just mean that I'd like there to be one molecule of my life that goes unexamined by Gregory House. I may have overreacted. 
You definitely overreacted. I knew you'd meet me halfway. It made me think. You only snap on one subject, losing people. So I went back to the intel. And it's true, there's only one doctor named Gonzalez at New York Mercy, but there's a Javier Gonzalez, who's a nurse in the psych ward. Now, who could you lose who'd end up there? Maybe the reason I don't always open up to you is because it's redundant. Daniel Wilson. Once you get a name, it's amazing how much stuff you can learn on the phone. I mean, if you're a doctor and you lie freely. I found your brother sleeping in the lobby of an office building in Manhattan. He got aggressive when they asked him to leave, and the cops took him to the Mercy psych ward. There have been new antipsychotics developed since he ran away. He's been on them for a couple of days, and by tonight, he should be in shape to talk to me. But you're not sure if he wants to. I'll be in New York in a few hours. I guess I'll find out. Why wouldn't you tell me this? House, you and I, we don't have the normal social contract. I don't expect you to tell me the lies that... I am fully capable of lying to you. I've lied plenty of times. I mean collaborative lies. Giving someone a hand who maybe needs to deceive themselves. Just a little. For two days, I've been thinking about how Danny's gonna react when he sees me. If I said that to anybody else, they'd say, don't worry, it'll all be all right. You wouldn't. Because it might all go horribly wrong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it might. In which case, you might want some company.